brings your referee in charge of the action, Jack Rays. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Our worldwide audience watching on ESPN is ready. Indio, California, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing tonight, blue trimmed in white and silver. He weighed it officially 159 and three quarter pounds. His professional record in 26 bouts stands at 23 victories, three defeats, 15 wins coming by way of knockout, fighting out of Passaic, New Jersey. Here is Glenn, Jersey Boy Tapia. And next, his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black trunks, he weighed it officially 160 pounds even. In 12 professional bouts, he stands perfect with 12 victories. No defeats, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Here's the undefeated middleweight hailing from Donegal, Ireland, Ilanima, Jason Quigley! Coaches, the trunks are good, mouthpiece, mouthpiece, good. I gave you guys both instructions. I just want to remind you to listen and obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard, fight clean. Good luck to both of you. All right, let's go to the tail of the tape presented by Tecate. There's a one-inch reach advantage for Glenn Tapia. He's also fought 70 more rounds than Jason Quigley, but look at the time since their last fight. He's been out of the ring three times as long as Jason Quigley, who's fighting for the first time in 2017. What does Glenn Tapia have to do to pull off the upset? Well, first of all, he cannot fight straight up like he normally fights. Glenn Tapia, that is. He fights straight up. He's there to get hit. He doesn't do too many much. He doesn't do any movement as far as upside. This guy with a left hook. But he, he's a stationary guy. And, you know, this is going to be a problem because Jason has good quick hands and throw combinations. And early, early, Tapia can find out that he's in there for a tough one. All right. Is it me or does Tapia look a little dry, Teddy? I mean, both guys look a little dry. You know, I... I, I understand what you're saying. Um, they both look a little bit dry, but uh, the more importantly is Tapio straight up as Bernard said and pulls straight back. You pull straight back, and you got a guy who's going to come after you, and quickly will go after you and follow you. Guess what? You're on that track. You haven't gotten off that track. You're going to get hit. Listen, I always never understood why trainers didn't teach fighters in the Jim, the most basic thing, don't go straight back. If a train was coming at you and you're on the railroad track, Bernard, you wouldn't go running back on the track. <laughs> you get off the damn track. Left or right, you gotta get off I that mean, track because you're on a straight, you're on a straight narrow to get hit with a left or right. And in this case, it looked like he's gonna get hit with the right hand because uh, you know you can see Jason waiting to throw it. He's waiting to throw it and he's gonna throw it right down the pipe. So you gotta get off that track because he's right in line to get nailed. You yeah. know what I'm gonna say is this. Everybody loves to say jab. Hey, young man, use that jab, use that jab. The problem with Tappy is the jab can be a good weapon for the opponent because when he jabs, he exposes himself. He throws it sometimes like that from too close. He doesn't move his head, doesn't cover fast with the left hand. And as I said earlier, I think Quigley can take a page out of the book of Bernard Hopkins when he fought Kelly Pavlik, who was undefeated at that time, and land the right hand over the jab of Tapia. You add to that the height advantage, the reach advantage, the fact that he's got more lateral movement, maybe uh, a more impressive toolkit, and it was set up off the jab. I mean, Dan Tapia now knows he's bleeding. As you can see, his left nostrils is, is bleeding because of the right hand and left hook. Teddy's right when you're in that straight line. 
you're going to get nailed every time. You can't miss him because you're right there. You're not moving to the left or the right. And eventually, eventually, that's, he ain't going to be able to overcome that. He's vulnerable here. We've seen him lose his last two fights against Lemieux and Soros in round four. He gets wobbled Stop. here in round no one. Punch. He no needs one punch. to make Step adjustments. Away from each other. Listen, I said Box. it at the beginning. I didn't hide anything. I like Glenn. He's a game guy. I think he's going to get knocked out tonight. And again, it hasn't happened yet, and it still might not happen. But for me to believe in Quigley, he should be able to do that because it's there for him. So we've already seen Quigley show his power, but we'll see if he can... Time! Stop punching! Sophia, who's now bleeding from his nose and wobbling back to his corner. And Teddy, this is the one that caused the damage. Yeah, the right hand, again, he goes to throw the left hand. He exposes himself. He, well, actually, he went to throw the right uppercut. Left hand was not up. Goes to throw that right uppercut. Left hand wasn't up. And what happened? Quigley stayed in tight, and he caught him. All he right. saw him start to move that hand a little bit. The other hand moved away. Nailed him with the straight right hand. I, and I still don't think Tapio has his bearings. I still yep. think he's a little bit groggy because he's getting hit with some solid punches. I mean, maybe they're not... One, they're not Devastating, but they're enough to get his attention because his legs is throwing some funny moves. And he wobbled back to the blue corner after that first round. But now the thing you see is Jason Quigley maybe trying to finish him here. He needs to take his time, right, Bihar? Well, look, we got a man in front of him. He needs to finish him. He needs to finish him. He needs to finish him. That's what he needs to do. If he saw what me and Bernard saw when Tapio walked back to his corner, he was mm -hmm. walking back like a guy that was out too late on Friday night. <laughs> Yeah, now he's going to try to put him out here in round two. But Len Top has got a lot of heart. He's got a lot of heart in him. Now, one thing he doesn't have in his corner is Freddie Roach. He didn't work with him for this fight because Freddie yeah, Roach was remember. expected to be No, that's in true. But in his last fight, he had Freddie Roach, yeah, and he got knocked out. Difference. You know, he got knocked out, taking, not knocking Freddie. Freddie, of course, is one of the premier trainers. Everybody knows that in the business. But he got knocked out the last time with him. So this time, Freddie was away in the Philippines with Pacquiao, where, of course, it makes sense for him. That's where his bread is buttered. And Tapi figured, hey, I stay home and I train at home. Big right there. And the one thing you can't teach, B-Hop, is chin. You can't teach that. Either you're born a puncher or you're born having a chin or you're not. You don't have one, rather. So let, let me tell you, Tapi, he's game. But I think that that game is going to play out because he's getting nailed by Jason with shots like this. Nice combination there. Left and hook up top and the left hook downstairs. That's what we haven't seen all night. In any of the fights, this combination punching that Jason Quigley is capable of putting well, together. Listen, we, listen let's, let's calm down a little bit before <laughs> we anoint him and we put him to the Hall of Fame. Let's calm down a little bit. He's got a guy who's standing right in front of him who's very available right now. He's doing what he should do, but he's doing with a guy who's imitating an Everlast heavy bag right now but I'm no, no no knock on him but that's what's going on right now and quickly should be doing these things he's a guy that's at a level where he should be able to do these things if he can't do these things with that guy in front of him now he should be doing something else for a living but, Stop. But I'm no also punch. looking at a guy that has great poise that's Box. not getting too excited well, because, things, pedigree. because things are too too easy for him right now he's taking his time oh, body shot. Body shot. A shot to the body, and when a fighter says no, it usually means yes. yes. Yeah, and that was a combination of both. That was in a little trip, a little off balance, but also was a shot there yes. too that he felt. And look to Bernard's point, Quigley's calm, but my God, you better be calm after 250 amateur fights. Are you kidding me? Otherwise, you should go in the corner. There's a touch there. there. And a trip. That so it's not the first time we see their feet tangled. You was on your foot. Two yeah. Stay to back. To the Box, stop at the bell. And yes, Watch the Jay, feet. You know, Jason Quigley is calm. You know who is not calm? The people at McGuigan's Pub in Donegal. So, but first, let's take a look at the trip, Teddy. Yeah, a little, little, look, the feet get mixed up a little bit, a little tripping on the feet there. You see the right foot behind the left foot, or the right foot in front of the left foot right there, and a little push, no doubt about it. Good call by a good referee, Jack Reese. A lot of referees might have got conned. We're talking about being calm in the ring. Referee has to be calm. Yes. He didn't panic. He didn't make the wrong call. Jack Reese showed why he's one of the better refs right there.
there. He saw it was a push. Definitely. One of the best in the business working there. And what do you see in the corner now? They're asking, they asking uh, Tapio, is he okay? Can he go? And he's saying yes. I mean, the referee board commission in, and they asked him more than once. Are you all right? Can you go? So well, that's but clear. Not, what would you say to somebody if you, if you were hurt? I know you weren't hurt. I would say I'm okay. Yeah. What do you mean? That's the other guy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's the other guy. So, so I got to laugh sometimes when they ask the fighter. You got to We're not going to tell the truth. Of course. We're not going to tell the truth. Of course you're not. That's why a good quarter man has to know his fighter, and he has to have the answers without the questions. And that's why Jack Reese, as you mentioned, is one of the best in the business taking care of the boxer when he can't stop, take stop, care stop, 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 stop. Well, he will take care of himself. Tapio is going to be desperate now because what? When the referee or the commission comes to your corner, they're looking at you for a reason. Yeah. And, and that's, that's why he's coming and reacting this way. And that's that going to get him knocked out quick. Legs not steady here, Teddy. Well, because he's going to walk right into the blade. I mean, really, he's going to walk into the propeller of the plane. And his punches are a little wide. And Quigley's punches oh. are a little straight. Oh, Although he did land a yes. good one there, Tapia. Quigley well, cannot get careless because of what we talked about. Len Tapia has 15 knockouts in 23 fights. And now they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the center of the ring. Well, Tapia Tapia just ran into a straight one-two. And his legs are Stop, straight. Stop, no one punch. He no has no punch, balance. Step away. And if he get Box. hit with a good shot, he's going down. Yeah, there's three things going on right now that really matter with Tapia. Once, first of all, to his point, Bernard's point, the legs are parallel. Look at the legs yes. of Tapia. That means he's square. That means Stop. there's a lot of My surface break. to Stop find. Use your a lot of surface Box. to hit. A lot of target to hit. So that's number one. Number two, Tapia's punch is a little wide. If Quigley's a little straighter, a little shorter, he's going to land a real nice clean shot. Right now he's landing 50% of his punches through three rounds. So Jason Quigley being effective, but also... Less punch output, but also 40% accuracy from Tapia so far. But what I'm not seeing Jason doing is Teddy is going to the body. He went to the head enough, and he's head hunting. And go to the body. Every now and then, he would get some more more response. Because I think that he's going to the head so much when he's head hunting. But to your point. Let him out, Jason. Let him out. No, really. Jason, let him go. Even though he's dominating. Work out of there, he's fellas. Yet, because he is not calm enough quite yet. After coming out there and hurting the guy and putting it in his head, oh. it's going to be an easy night. I'm going to get rid of him. That's working against him a little bit now. There That's he goes. The the body shot says. in almost a minute and a half. Yep. And he should have been throwing those body shots because he would have wore him down more until that body shot, he got a response. But it wasn't enough. But I'll tell, you something, the job. But I'll tell you something that quickly is doing for the most part. Right now Stop. he's smothering Nobody a little punch. bit. He's taking Step a little away bit from of a each break. Other? He's moving his feet on the inside where he's giving himself room as Tapia forward. Let him go, Jason. Forward. He's giving him himself go, Jason. a little bit of room. Let his arm go. Where he can have room to throw those shots instead of smothering himself. And that's important for a young fighter if they want to finish well, oh. is to move those feet on the inside to create a little room where they don't get smothered. But I'm telling you, quickly now, showing that he's not, even though he's dominant, not quite a pro at that level yet. Because you could just see the way he's breathing. You could see it in his face that he expected to score a knockout, and he's a little bothered by the fact this that he had intelligence. The intelligence right now. Round three coming to an end here for Fantasy Sports. Hey, 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 come on. This year. A little second win, huh? He had a good round. He's actually starting to get tired. He got a second win. Oh, watch, watch. Let's go into the corner for the Hennessy Never Stop and Never Settle Corner Camp where Manny Robles was emphatic as to what he wanted Jason Quigley to do. And also, what? in the blue corner, they were keeping a very Thanks. close eye on Four. Glenn Tapia. They don't want him to get hurt. Comes out throwing the jab. With Thanks, Max. Top it, trying to establish something here after three rounds of dominance from the man who's got his grandfather's name on the back of his trunks. This Bobby round, Love. this round here, yes, Ronaldo, this round here is going to show what both fighters bring to the table other than what we just seen. What I mean is that, in case you don't know, 
both fighters right now talking to each other before the fight was the full round ended and they're coming out right now to show that you know i'm here to stay and i'm going to be involved and i'm going to win this fight well i see a distinct little adjustment here this round oh, big right by top there yeah, a little adjustment by quickly early on trying to control range and separation where he can allow Tabio to do some of his work for him. What I mean by that is Tabio is prone to reach a little bit, lean in a little bit, and with a little bit of separation, quickly looking to get Tabio to walk into something, to leave himself a little bit open where he can score with a clean counter on the outside. Hey, I seen something that Teddy might have seen. Jason Quinley just got a hit, got hit with a right hand. Yep seconds ago and he responded with trying to box a little bit trying to get out of well, the that's way that's what i'm saying trying oh. to stay keep a little distance well that's to the that's what i'm saying but now this round he's made a conscious effort quickly being he to separate not to go to the power game so much in the trenches but to get a little separation where he can get an opening with a little help from his friends like the beatles song said with tabia reaching in a little bit where he can score something with maybe a gap being Work out of there, fellas. Let him go. A little Don't throw him, Glenn. But we shouldn't minimize one thing here. First three rounds, quickly, yes. But a lot of punches thrown. Yes. A, a lot of energy used. And I'm looking at him. And his mouth's open. And let me tell you, it's changed a little bit. Now we see the combination punching by Glenn Tapia. The big right. And then he follows it with some work downstairs, Breha. And Glenn Tapia now is getting more courage. He's getting more brave. Get off his and, head. And, and Get off his head. Look at Jason. Jason's breathing. Yep, you know, his he's got his open. mouth open. I mean... He wasn't breathing like this. He wasn't responding three or four rounds ago. No, so, exactly. So, so That's what I'm saying. It's a reason, and, and Teddy's right, it's a reason he's doing that because he's feeling now something different. Oh, now he chin checks Glenn Tapia once again with a short left hook. And you Tapia know, now will have to recover, Teddy. Yeah, and listen, there is a physical component here. Again, quickly won those first three rounds, but at what expense? At what expense? You know, he won he won the battle, but does he lose the war by expending too much energy? And that's what Tappy is looking to take advantage of and has this round. Round four comes to an end. Time. Here at ESPN. To the untrained, it appears as chaos. But here this man. Tim Bradley, the former four-time world champion, the Desert Storm. You trained him for his last fight, Teddy. Now, his last two fights. See. Yeah, now let's see what happened here in this round. Well, you see the right hand by Tapio. We've been talking about the right hand of Quigley. Let's be fair here. Flipping the script. We hear about that sometimes. Tapio flipped the script a little bit that round. I talked about it earlier that, you know, Quigley won the battle those three rounds in a row that he took. But a lot of energy expended. Is he losing the war because of that? And that round was a confidence go, round to Bernard's point. That was a confidence round for Tapia coming back. The people, look, he's still, his flaws are his flaws. He's got flaws, Tapia. But he's got a lot of heart. He's been in there with top guys, although he has been beaten by those top guys. But we don't know if quickly he's a top guy yet. That's right. See, see that's the question. Yes. He's been beaten by every top guy he's ever fought. But quickly hasn't proven he's a top guy yet. And right now, He's getting asked to behave like a pro, and he's getting caught. And Glenn Tabio's getting hit with that right hand. Even that replay, he was throwing the right hook. He wasn't throwing it straight. He was throwing the right hook. Back. Glenn Tabio was throwing back. the right hook around the glove, around the glove of Jason. And you see the inflammation on the left side of Jason Quigley's cheek, so it's not an easy fight. I mean, Glenn Tapia came to fight. Oh, and now he he just ran him coming in. He flipped his script. Yep. He got Quigley to get over edges, to reach in a little bit, and Tapia stood his ground, and he counted. There was a hole that was formed by Quigley reaching in, and he filled that hole. Quigley, to my point, is showing he's not a pro yet. Look, he's Stop. still no one punch. No he's punch. Step away. By Step away out. He Box. is not a pro yet. He may become a pro, but he's not a pro yet. But the confidence of Glenn Tapia is he's gone further in this fight than in his last two fights. He lost in the fourth round against David Lemieux and Michael Soros. So now he's in territory where he says, I have already taken his best shot. Let's see. 
Well, it's real simple in that corner, and you said it perfect. His corner, nothing fancy, nothing philosophical. In his corner, in Tabby's corner, they're saying exactly that. Okay. They're saying, you took the best of him. We know what you were made of. Let's find out what he's Let made him of. Go. And that's what we're, Come on, Jason, get out that's of what we're seeing now, Bernard, as Glenn Tapia is digging deep here in round five. And what I like that Jason understands that he has to keep him off him. He has to keep Glenn Tapia off him. And he's making him, he make, Glenn is making him fight tough. He's making him fight hard. Because if he don't, then Glenn Tapia is going to walk all over him because he's coming straight. You know, sometimes this business is about Floyd Mayweather stuff. You know, real sophisticated stuff. Real cute stuff. You know, real, real smart stuff. But sometimes it's about caveman stuff. Right <laughs> now, it's about caveman stuff. Yep. Tapia has, look, he's hitting his gloves together. He's saying, hey, I took your best stuff. I've taken the best stuff of people before. I don't think you're as good as those people that beat stop, people. Stop, stop. I'm going to find out. Yeah. This, 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 is this, is yeah. Jack Reese. Yeah. 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 This, this, this is an alley fight. And somebody wallet just got taken. And somebody, and you want it back. And how you get it back, you fight to get it back. And that's what Glenn Tapia is doing. And listen, I'm a witness. You were here. You were right here. You didn't take no one's wallet. I'm a witness. <laughs> Hold on. I'm a witness. I don't take wallets no more. No more. All right. I know that. We're going to listen in to Stop punching, stop. corner stop. after good punch output here in Almost round got five. Me. Let's listen in. Almost got me. You see that? Oh, well. Just as the man in the corner instead of Freddy Roach in this particular fight, but we saw something very interesting in this fifth round. What you saw was the right hand being set up off the jab, constantly right there with a button, and he's continued to throw that right hand as if he's successful, like over and over and over. That wasn't the first one, that was maybe the second one I've seen in that round. That right hand after the jab. And you see the face of both guys saying, this is a war. We saw the early tide in favor of Jason Quigley, but these last two rounds, that right hand has really equalized things for the shop worn but very game Len Tapia. No, and listen to Bernard's point. You know, the jab is the table setter, and then you go eat with the right hand, and he did that. But let's not forget that Quigley made it available by going straight back and by having that left hand left out there after he threw oh. the left hand. All right, now Quigley, they're just standing toe to toe. Listen, Quigley is fighting Tapia in fight yes, sir. right now. The difference is he's not using his skill set to his advantage, he's allow and he's allowing the heart of Glenn Tapia and, to dictate the fight. And Quigley is not using his range. Yep. Teddy mentioned it earlier in the fight. He's not using his range. He's closing the distance, which is working against him. Exactly right. And to Bernardo's point, his skill set means using range. Quigley's skill set means this. Yep. Getting on the outside and being able to pop on the outside a little bit, keep him, keep him at bay, and then force him to make mistakes. Not go into the pocket where you're going to allow Tapia to be able to find you. Now we see Glenn Tapia going with wide punches. And Bernard, at the fighter meetings, that percentage sign on uh, Quigley's trunks means that every time someone steps things up he's gonna step it up even higher yes. have you seen him do that yet i haven't seen him done that i think i see him take two steps back based on energy stop based no on one punch no one punch let him go let him out of there symbols that he wore on his shorts so he has to do that or he's going to know that glenn tapia is going to continue to pressure more confident glenn tapia is getting every round and he's throwing that right hand with meaningful power you know guys when I was doing my homework looking at tape, two fights ago, this undefeated fighter from Ireland quickly fought an experienced, he stepped up. He stepped up and he fought an experienced guy named De La Rosa. Yep. De La Rosa. And you know what? I, he got a win, and everybody applauded him, patted him on the back. I looked at that, and I said, you know what? He showed a lot of flaws here. And, but more importantly, he showed me what I'm saying tonight. He wasn't a pro yet. I thought the fight was going to help him get towards that, but he looked bewildered. He faltered in that fight. From the pressure coming at him, he started to lose himself a, a little bit. He started to act like an amateur, not like a pro. He showed me he still had somewhere to go. Tonight, he's showing that again. He's not quite there as a pro yet. Yes, he has promise, but again, a little bit. Pull your arm out, Quig. Pull your arm out, fight. A little faltering tonight. 
and a little vulnerable tonight. Nice right uppercut there by Quigley, but we mentioned two key words at the onset of the show for this main event in terms of Glenn Tapia. Maturity and experience, and this is where it's starting to show. It's playing out, it's playing out, and I think that right hand gonna land before this bell ring. All right, we got about 20 seconds, so let's see who can come out with this round. Glenn Tapia looking to attack. Jason Stop Quigley both looking guys. to do Stop at the end of this round pack. to punctuate and sway the judges as this has been a very even fight, especially after Glenn Tapia has been coming on in the last three rounds. We've got a break. Time, stop we'll punching! from Fantasy Springs. Back here in Fantasy Springs Casino for our main event of Glenn Tapia taking on Jason Quigley. This is McQuiggan's Pug in Donegal Island. It's after 4 a.m. They had to get special permission to see their hometown boy do his thing. And you can see some concern in their eyes because the tide has shifted in favor of Glenn Tapia. We knew this was going to be a war, Teddy. And now we're going to see exactly what this Irishman is made of. Yeah, we're talking about Barry McQuiggan, of course, a former featherweight champion of the world. And his son has become a good trainer. Yes. He trains Frampton. Frampton, of course, fought De La Cruz, two great fights. And one thing about when I was fighting, when, when De La Cruz and Frampton fought, it was like you were transported to Ireland. I yeah. mean, all the flags come out, you know, they start singing the songs like they do in a soccer game, and you have a good crowd again with that kind of atmosphere representing Quigley here tonight, but not going the way the crowd expected it to go. 1,800 strong here at Fantasy Springs, and now we're seeing the right hand of Quigley find a home, but... You know who's not falling backwards anymore? It's Glenn Tapia. Yeah. No, he's not. He's coming forward. He's been a lot of success coming forward. And oh. he see he see that the right hand is landed. And he also see that Jason is tired. He also see that he's breathing. And the punches might not be effective as they was early in the fight. And that, that gives you encourage to come forward. And then now we see the cut, that, Teddy, yeah. as I get in here real quick. Yeah, Glenn Tapia the, cut over the right eye. Yeah, well, Tapia, you know, he's he's been... He's been cut with head clashes in several fights. This isn't anything new to him. So he's not going to panic from it. You'd wish that it didn't happen. You don't want to see red. But again, he's he falls over his head a little bit. You can see him there, forward, Jason, get your arm out. And he leaves himself vulnerable, which he has in the past, to headbutts. And quickly was cut over his, actually his left eye four fights ago. No red for quickly so far. But definitely, as you said, a cut. For Tapia. And what I don't see from Quigley is what? An uppercut. Yes. An uppercut. Because he's throwing every other punch, but he's not oh. throwing a punch that really matters in this case. He has an uppercut. But he's got a good right hook there. Well, he's not throwing a punch that's available, but that speaks to what we were talking about before. He's not clear minded. He's not seeing what a pro needs to see in that corner. We talked about his physical exhaustion from that third first three rounds. There's a little bit of a mental exhaustion going on with both fighters, and in particular with Quigley right now. And again, to Bernard's point, should be throwing the uppercut. Look at the way Tabby is leaning forward. It calls for an uppercut. But when you're not a pro yet, and you start to let your emotions get the better of you, you don't see those things. The pros you're see panicked. those things. And he's panicking. And, and Teddy's panicking. That's why you don't see it, because pressure's coming on him. Oh, on Tapia. Big right hand there. And although Tapia shakes his head once again, it's probably the best fight, the best punch he's landed in about three rounds. Because Jason's throwing one punch. If it was another punch behind that, he would have been he would have seen more damage. Too. And why did he throw one punch? Let's go back a little bit. Expended a lot of energy in those first three rounds, and it's showing here. I'm going to make it real simple. He looks tired. And, and I'm not knocking his condition. I don't know what his condition is. I think part of it's mental, that he's a little bit mentally exhausted because he didn't get rid of the guy he thought he was going to. He's panicking a little, Time. to Bernard's point. There you go. He thought he was going to get him out. Let's listen Chewy. in to Quigley. Chewy, Chewy. listen in. Robles has the word. I need vaseline. I got you right here. 
Respect to your skill. Okay? Don't fight outside. Hey. Respect to the outside. Jump, jump, jump. Back half step off. Okay? Keep it, keep it. Keep the hands heavy. Everything off. That's a lean on your face. There's a setup with the right hand going to eventually come right down the pipe right there. It was an overhand right. It wasn't a straight right hand. It was an overhand right. Sort of like a hook right. And it caught him right on the chin. But you know what he didn't do? He didn't put the left hand either underneath or on top to get more mileage out of that yeah, punch. Yeah, you know why? He wasn't in position yeah. to throw that punch. Leaning forward. Leaning forward. Bad technique. You know, bad fundamentals. But I'm going to go a step further again. It's the mental part. He knows that he has better fundamentals than that. Are you kidding me? He knows that he shouldn't throw punches like that. He's in a bad place right now. He's in a place where he's panicking a little bit. He's a little bit out of control. He's, I'm going to use the word again, he's not a pro yet. Now, Teddy, both guys have taken a lot of punishment from the other in this fight, and they both are getting sloppy with the way they're throwing punches because they're leaving themselves wide open, and that could set things up for a big finish here. Whoever capitalizes on those mistakes is going to do well from here on. Yep. And, and let me tell you, uh, Jason really is not is not thrown with power. He's really hand, well, that was a good right hand, but there's nothing beyond it. It's one punch. Even if he do get in a reaction. Has his technique changed in terms of the if way he's he standing? If he get, or why, why is well, it that he's I not think a lot getting of it, anything behind I think it's not because he exhausted any unestimated Tapia's toughness. Okay. He unestimated his toughness because early on in the fight, he was having his way. And he's not having his way every round now. Listen, Tapia, I'm going to tell you my scorecard right here to show you how desperate it is. At least in my mind, Quigley, 67, Tapia, 66. It has to be close. Yes. There's, there's some tough rounds in there, but I, I see that this round on to the end, if it lasts the end, that it's going to be it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Oh, These big rounds encounter are there from. Uh Quigley, who catches Glenn Tapia once again. These guys are getting sloppy, and whoever capitalizes B-Hop, you mentioned it, is going to be in a position to maybe finish this fight, but the other guy has to make a mistake for that to happen, it would seem. Yeah, well, I mean, in that case, it's pretty simple. Anybody could see that. <laughs> no, no, and you're right. I mean, Tapia allowed, I mean, he, he helped quickly land those punches by just falling in right and, and that's why again to the point we both made me and bernard both made early on quickly needs to keep a little separation because he's still the better skilled guy and if he keeps a little separation he can show those skills he gets in too close well then it's about who's the stronger guy you know who's the more active guy you know who's the who who's who's gonna throw the punches you know and then and wind up scoring something in those spots where you give someone like Tapia with a little less skills an opportunity to smother you, an opportunity to bring it to his level. When there's separation, you see Quigley start to get the better of it. Now big right hands, and that opens up the left hand for Quigley. And both guys, both guys, both has war written all over their face. They sure do. A mouse under then Tapia's eye which is also cutting Quigley's left eye is inflamed as well. Let's listen in on Glenn Tapia's court. Put this boy on his ass. Yeah. You hear me? Make a tight fist, start tightening it up, man. Put it together. You yeah. heard? Just roll in, let it go. You understand? Know Everything ain't gotta be hard. Right? Put it together. Control. Set up the hard punches, bro. It ain't. Don't. You heard? All right.
fact, there was thoughts of stopping the fight, and Glenn Tapia asked for these last two rounds, so we will see desperation from his corner. That's what they were asking for, Bill. Absolutely. I mean, he literally begged Teddy and Bernardo for those two rounds. He was concerned about the cut, maybe, or whatever, but he begged for those two rounds, and he's coming out showing that he really wanted to go two rounds to make something happen. Listen, I'm as much as anybody an advocate for looking out for the fighter, more than most people, but this is not opera. I was a little bit shocked in that corner to hear them saying they're looking to stop it. I don't think this fight is at that point right now where you should be looking to stop the fight. I really, I'm, I'm, I was kind of shocked by that. Again, I mean, this, you know. I thought he won the last round. Well, the, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm really surprised to hear that. I mean, you got Tapia right in the middle of this fight, testing this kid, this untested kid to a certain extent. He's testing him, he's taking him into deep waters. It's a good fight, and they're talking about, hey, you got to show me something, otherwise I'm going to stop it. I mean, what fight are they watching? They're overreacting. Again, I understand what a difficult sport this is, what a dangerous sport it can be, but it's an impact sport. The fighters understand what it is, and you got a guy like Tapia, he's not going to win always on his skill. He's going to win on his heart. Give him a chance to win on his heart. If this fight should be stopped, I'd be the first one to say it. Yes, we've seen that's, that in the past, I'd be the Eddie. first one to say it. That's not the case right now. I'm shocked, shocked to have heard that. All right, Teddy, really quick, something interesting. The experience of Tapia, who's been in the ring so many more times than Quigley. Tapia's his first fight past eight rounds. He's never been in deep water, so we'll see how he reacts. This is Quigley's second time past eight rounds in half the fights. Well, Tapia's not reacting well because he's getting a little outboxed there, and he haven't thrown a punch. Well, that's the first punch he's thrown in a minute, and he doesn't look like he oh, can nice react to it. So he's fighting based on being forced to fight. And soon, soon as Jason stops Quigley, stop and try to throw combinations, he try to get a punch off for two. Look, but he, he, can't, he can't survive like that. And look, to our point of why this fight shouldn't, and look, it might turn around in two seconds, and maybe it should be stopped. But right now, come on, are you kidding me? And to that point, Quigley don't look like a house on fire to me. Right. He, he's showing you right now that he's got doubts in his mind. That's why he's stepping off the gas. That's why he's boxing. And he's happy that Tappy is leaving him alone right now. There's doubt in Quigley. I know Quigley's winning this round. I understand that. And he looks like he has a little bit of a second win. But there's doubt in his mind. Again, he's not a complete 10-round fighter yet. And that's all the reason Glenn Tappy should be pressing him, pressing him, going all, all bars out. He should be right now throwing punches and not staying out there getting out box which he is right now yes double left hook by jason quigley but he's not following up to teddy's point i mean both guys are really doubting whether they can do this through the 10th quigley, round quigley's happy he's being left alone yes. believe me all right round stop, 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 stop. Then let's stay here listen in on top of his corner to see right. what that conversation is like Yo, man, last round. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yo, you gotta put him out. Right. No way you're gonna win the decision. Right. Two behind me far. That round, you didn't do nothing, man. Yeah. I, hope, I hope you're saving that last round for this round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You tell me. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you got one in Yeah, yep. Last round. Yeah, you got one in. Yeah. Big, big folk. Yeah. Tap, look at me. Gotta put him on his ass. Yeah, yeah. Every Things, those you got, man. Okay. For little mama, all right. Okay. For all everything hard. When you hurt him, you gotta jump on him. That round, you didn't give me nothing. Yeah. You have to give me something this round. You heard me? Yeah. Give me everything you got this round. A hurt? Let's go. Yep, yep, yep. This, go. Cor this go. corner was brought to you by the Hennessy Corner Cam, and there's no better motivation than your family. And in the corner of Glen Tucker, they brought up his daughter Isabella and said, "Go do this for little mama." Let's see. What they can get out of here, but you know what? You know, I'm gonna beyond that. You know what that showed me? Desperation. No, well, of course, there's desperation, but it showed me something else. And we talk about it quite often, but not in this game. You get to a point where a guy's behind, Tabby is behind, and you have two choices survive and go the distance, or try to win at, at your own expense. Yes. Well, you might get knocked out, but try to win. I gotta give credit to his corner and to Tabia. In that corner, if he's true to what they said, 
He's not going to try to survive. He's going to try to win. That's what was going on. A decision was made. We're going to try to win this fight. Stop. Both you guys stop. And stop. we also Whoa. know step we're back, one Chase. round away from step surviving away. with an undefeated Box. fighter that nobody, including Teddy Atlas, didn't think that we were going to survive with. But they're not choosing to do that. They're choosing. They're making the choice. I think the right choice to try to win. And that's what he's doing right now, Teddy. He's throwing punches. He's not winning his fight now, but he's trying to find a way to get the knockout. And, and that's, Glenn Tapia, that's true. Glenn yeah. Tapia talked about people wanting him to retire, advising him to retire. And he said, I still have something left in the tank. And Teddy, he's proven this tonight. He's still in punches. And listen, and I was wrong. I give all the credit. I was right and I was wrong. And I'm the first to say when I was wrong. I was right that Quigley's not there yet. I was right that he's not there, that he can still be made to falter. He still can be put into a bewildered position. And if you're there, you don't get put into that position. So I was right about that. And it was wrong that Tapia would get knocked out. Well, actually, I didn't say would get knocked out. I said he should get knocked out if quickly is what everybody is saying he is. And you know what? He's not there yet. 13 fights as a pro. Let's settle down. You said it, Teddy. Best. Let's settle down. But... Both guys, show, both guys showed me something, you know, on a positive and a negative. And, you know, Jason Quigley showed me a little less than what I expect. And so, take this and move on to the next thing. If you can still pull this out, which you should, and, and learn from this. And pick the best and the worst things that you should have done and what you shouldn't have done. And, you know, we, we, talked about, this. we talked about early, but now one of the most important things, my responsibility as a trainer, is to help a fighter find his ID. Yeah. Who he is. He's got to find quickly. He's got to find his ID. And I think his ID is to control the outside. Not be inside like Joe Frazier one second, and then outside like Pernell Whitaker, Muhammad Ali the next. Find out who you are and be consistent with who you are. And that's what this fight hopefully will help him find. And if you notice, Jason Quigley, when he boxes, he looks tremendous. He makes it easy. He pops shot. He throws his jabs. He misses him. He just missed three or four punches. He's thrown at him. And, he, and he's, he can box. And sometimes you should lose those. Stop, 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 stop. This series would be about putting their prospects fight, to the test. That's exactly what happened tonight. And it gave Glenn Tapia an opportunity to earn another payday in boxing with this performance tonight. We'll be back and see what the judges saw in the ring and who will come away with the victory. Jason Quick, the undefeated, or Glenn Tapia, back on top. Sounds your crispy bacon makes drive me crazy, you naughty little. Did you just spank your lunch? Yeah. Devour foods you want to fork. You get used to food odors in your car. You think it smells fine, but your passengers smell this. New Febreze car with odor clear technology cleans away odors for up to 30 days. Smells nice. Breathe happy with new Febreze. This rusty mess isn't going anywhere. Don't trust it to just any cleaner. Trust the power of CLR. You can rely on CLR's patented formula to make quick work of even the toughest jobs. That shower head clogged with crusty white buildup? Just dip it in a little CLR, and it goes from running slow to running like new. CLR tackles the most stubborn stains around the house, in the bathroom, and outside the house, on stucco, siding, and more. You can also trust CLR to be safer for your home and family. The EPA awarded it the Safer Choice Seal. It gets tools shining again with just a wipe, but a swish and a rinse cleans hard water buildup in your coffee pot, too. And a half cup poured into your washing machine and dishwasher helps keep them running clean and trouble-free. Trust the power of the CLR family. And next time, look for the Safer Choice Seal and trust your clean to CLR. CLR is found at fine retailers near you. For more information about the CLR brand of products, follow us on our social media channels. With flights getting so expensive, how do you find great deals anymore? Well, Priceline found a way with Express Deal Flights. We partner with top airlines to fill their unsold seats, saving you up to 40%. Just tap and go. 
hey, Vegas. You know, I saw this wild show in Vegas with my friend Diana. There were like acrobats and people on wires. That... Oh, am I boring you? Hello? Flights up to 40% off. Check them out now at Priceline. From the Fantasy Springs Casino, Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN is presented by Thick Gotti. Born Gold. And it's brought to you by Hennessy. Never stop, never settle. Well, neither Jason Quigley nor Glenn Tapia stopped or settled. What was your scorecard, Teddy? Well, after six rounds, I had it dead even, and then I had Quigley taking the last four rounds, and I have him winning 97-93 on my scorecard for Quigley. All right, B-Hop, how about I, you? I had a dead even around the seventh, but, you know, I had uh, Jason Quigley taking the last three rounds and, you know, maybe one or two rounds before then uh, even, but uh, he won a fight in that decision, I believe. A great way to get this fight, this series started as Jason Quigley and Glenn Tapia await their fate. Joe Martinez with the official scores. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. Carla Caiz has it 100 to 90. Zach Young, 99-91. And Max DeLuca has it 98-92. All for your winner by unanimous decision. He is a new NABF middleweight champion and still undefeated. The Irish-born Elani Ma, Jason. You know, maybe these judges should take a few punches and get in the ring and take a few yeah, boxing rounds and get hit a couple times. And maybe cool. they would have more respect for this sport and understand that Tapia was in a closer fight and deserved better scores yeah. than that. Yeah, definitely. This was not a shutout fight, but all the more...